Can everybody hear me? Y'all hear me? So good evening, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, and thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I know it's cold out, but before we get started, uh, I'd be remiss not to mention some terrible news that we received last night. Um, so if you don't know, the trial to convict police officer uh, Michael Owen Jr. for the killing of William Green, who was handcuffed in 2020, wrapped up this week in Prince George's County. Last night, a jury made a very poor and devastating decision and found Michael Owen Jr. not guilty on all counts. And so I bring this up because as you'll hear from our speakers today, these issues and conflicts that we go through are intersectional as much as they are intentional. The killing of William Green was no accident, just as the racially discriminatory election system here in Wakamako is no accident. And it's a shame, truly a shame when human beings themselves are unable to see the humanity in others. So our thoughts, our hearts, and our prayers are very much with our friend and partner, Nikki Owens, her family, and each and every individual impacted in the community of Prince George's County off of this very sad and tragic news. And so I just wanted to make that clear that even here on the Eastern Shore, we are very much in support of, uh, very much in support and, and with them always. And so now to get into our order of business today, so today, challenging a racially discriminatory and unlawful at-large component of the election system for the Wacomico County Council and Board of Election, which dilute the votes of black residents and limit fair representation, several black voters and local organizations have joined to file suit today in federal district court in Baltimore under the Landmark, Landmark Voting Rights Act of 1965. The action comes against the backdrop of a long history and legacy of racial discrimination and oppression in Wacomico County and across Maryland's Eastern Shore. The Wacomico County branch of the NAACP, the Caucus of African American Leaders, and the Watchmen with One Voice Mitchell Alliance joined with individual voters, Dr. Eddie Boyd, Luke Analock, Amber Green, and Monica Brooks in charging that the county's resistance to enacting fair election plans has denied the right of black residents to vote free from discrimination and to a fair representation in this government for far too long. Together, they asked the court to declare the current election system unlawful and require the county and school board to create a fair system that complies with the Voting Rights Act. And so with that, I'd like to introduce our first speaker for this afternoon, Dr. Eddie Boyd. Thank you, and good afternoon to all. I'm Eddie Boyd, um, and what I believe is that this whole suit is about the is it on? Just going to talk as close as you can to it. Okay. This whole suit is about the African American population in Wicomico County is about two sevenths of the total population of the county. And of those seven seats on the county council and the seven seats on the school board should be distributed in such a way that about two uh, of, of those each should be seats where African Americans have an, a, more than an average chance of electing uh, members. I go back to this, this is not a new issue for me. Uh, I go back to about in the early 1980s 
when uh, the late Billie Jean Jackson Sr., Rudy Kane, and others, along with myself, uh, were involved when the Justice Department filed suit against the county, at that time against its total at-large system. The county then decided uh, to try and uh, deal with that by creating this hybrid system with two at-large uh, uh, seats and five seats elected from single-member districts. At that time, on behalf of the organization, which was then called New Directions, I presented to the county council to a plan, say so if we want to have only five seats on the county council, then all five should be elected from single-member districts. And if you do wish to go to seven, we also had a plan uh, which would have afforded uh, seven single-member districts, two of which would have had better than an average chance of electing an African-American from those two. But yet the county at that time decided, well, because uh, we, we want to uh, limit the amount of, I guess, uh, territorialism at the uh, level of the districts, we need at-large voters, or two at-large, to represent the county uh, because of administrative together with uh, legislative uh, priorities and responsibilities of then, then county council. Well, since that time, the, uh, we have a different system altogether. We have now a county, county executive that has a responsibility for looking out for the welfare of the entire county. Uh, and so no longer can that uh, reason uh, n exist, uh, no longer does it exist, because we have the county executive with the responsibility of handling the administrative aspects of the county. And the county council now is a legislative body, and so there's no reason why, uh, at least the old reason, certainly does not apply any longer. I also had the opportunity of serving on the Wacomico County Board of Education and during the time when I served, I joined the Board of Education. There was already an African American on the county council, a good friend of mine, uh, Ed Center Henry. And so we served together, and after Ed's uh, uh, term ended, I served with another uh, African American, uh, Randy Alton, and then when Randy passed, uh, along with Sylvia. So we had a system then in place that was at least providing opportunities for at least fair representation on the school board. Once we switched over to the uh, all-elected school board and then adopted the same election process uh, that's used in the county, it, it, it's just egregious that uh, all of a sudden now we have one possibility for a member on the school board, one possibility for a member on the county council. And in effect, what happened is this. With the uh, at-large position, one of those at-large positions essentially was taken from the African-American community and then provided uh, for the white uh, community so that now we have one African-American, six non-African-American, six whites uh, serving on both the school board and the county council where the, whereby there should be at least a 5-2 mix rather than a 6-1 mix. And the final thing I'd like to say is, you know, uh, having a single African American on the county council or the, and the school board sort of indicates that the African American community is a monolithic community. Uh, we don't even allow for two separate African American voices to uh, share and speak about issues concerning various issues in the African-American community where maybe we may not even agree, but at least we'll have two voices there, and as opposed to now a system where there's one voice speaking for the whole of the African-American community, six voices speaking for the predominantly uh, white community. And then finally, what I would say ask of the school board and the county council is not to uh, spend one dime, uh, any money, any resources, fighting against this suit. We just ask that you would do the right thing, provide equity to the full community, and especially to the African-American community, 
whereby there's, we can uh, have equity on the school board, equity on the county council, and move forward in trying to govern this county as best we can. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Board. <laughs> Next, we'll have Wacomico resident uh, Amber Green have a few words. I won't be up here really long to, because I don't really feel like there needs to be too much said on the reason why we're here. We're here because this is a long time coming. We're here because for a long time, Wacomico County has told, has shown, and has been an example of white supremacy for years, and we're tired. And I feel as though there are young people in our community that are going through a lot. There are young people who are facing incarceration. There are young people who are facing homelessness. There are young people who are facing mental health crisis. There are young people who are going through life and they are going through trials and they're going through tribulations and they're trying to ask the question, why should I care? Why should I have a voice in this fight? Why should I make sure that my vote matters? And generations has proven time and time, maybe it doesn't. I think when I decided to run for office, I wanted to be that example for young people to say, why not you? Why shouldn't you be able to run for office? Why shouldn't you be able to have a voice? Why shouldn't you be able to lead? I wanted to be an example. And I ended up being an example of why you shouldn't waste your time trying to make change because the system is built to go against you. I don't want young people to give up because I'm not giving up. You pivot. You don't get tired of the discrimination. You don't get tired of everything and just give up. You make sure you keep fighting. And this is a history day. This is a day in history. This is a moment where we're really taking a stand back. And we're standing up and we're saying that we are going to fight for this. And this is a big step. And my message here is just for young people. Why not you? I'm up here. Countless of other young people are up here. Leaders are up here and they're out here challenging you to get involved, get informed, because we're fighting for you because your vote, your generation is going to carry us along the way. And that's why, that's what I want to say. And that's why this is important to me. Because at the end of the day, it's the young people who are going to be casting these ballots. It's the young people who are going to be voting. It's the young people who may be in office we need to encourage them and let them know that it's time for them to stand up. But it's hard to stand up when the system is keep counting against you. And as adults and as the generations ahead of the young people, we have to set the tone and right now we are. And so I wanna welcome the entire community to this fight. And Wakamako, you can fight if you want, but we're coming. Thank you. Thank you, Amber. Next up, I'd like to invite uh, Luke Analock, another Comico resident, to the podium. All right, I didn't plan any remarks, didn't bring anything to say, so I'm going to be speaking from your heart right now. I just want to say there's a lot of historical wrongs that have yet to be made right, and I'm proud that I can join this outstanding group of leaders, fighters, and change makers to make sure that we can make the future of this county more equitable to, to represent the values of the people in this county. Because right now, there is only one seat in District 1 of Oconco County. That is the only seat where a, man, a person who looks like me has a chance of winning. That is only one seat. That is, statistically speaking, that doesn't make sense. There will be only one seat that a person like me has a chance to win. That doesn't make sense. So I'm glad that I have the opportunity to join this group of people to make a difference for the next generation. That's all I have to say, so thank you. Thank you. Next up, I'd like to invite Monica Brooks uh, of the NAACP branch of Wakamako to the podium. Good afternoon. 
Um, I am standing here in two spaces, one as an individual, one as um, NAACP, but I'll say on NAACP first. Um, since becoming president this past year, the countless calls that I have received for the injustices that are occurring throughout this county, certain things that I already knew about, but to find out that these things are being fault, that the information and, and access to help is falling on deaf ears. To see our council be in a place where three people from the same district can sit on the council currently, whether that's in the Board of Education or, or on the county council for the at-large system. Dr. Boyd mentioned we are not a monolith. We are a diverse group of individuals that are still fighting for justice. For us to be beholden to one small little corner to be put baby in the corner is not the right thing to do in this time and age. We are demanding equity. We are demanding justice. We are demanding fairness. We are demanding the seats, seats at the table that we deserve. For us to be told, oh look, you have that space. You can run for that district, right? I, I too ran for office and I was considering running in the at-large in the at-large space and realizing I would not have a chance in hell to get in that particular position. But people said, oh well you can run in this space, right? That's what you can do. So for them to see us in this space and say this is your corner, this whole county belongs to us. Our children are in this county our families are in this county, and we have a right to what, what is, takes place throughout the entire county. We have a right to offer, in, uh, to, um, we have a right to ask for certain legislation to bring about fairness. We have a right to ask that our school board see our kids as they are. Currently, we know that an article just came out about what's going on, not just in Wacomico County, but throughout this nation. And at in each occurrence, our kids of color continue to be at the top of the list of being targeted. Even though we do not have the high numbers of a Baltimore, a Prince George's County, our numbers disproportionately, are our kids are disproportionately targeted time and time again through arrests, through suspensions, through everything that can, that can come at them, that prevent them from being successful in life, we want to come against that. It is time. It is, as Amber said, it is overdue. It is long overdue. Our kids, 69% of our kids are in poverty. We don't have enough resources in the schools, even with funding. Our county council chose not to give our schools adequate funding, which they continually do. But if they saw themselves in those kids, as we can have put people of color in those positions because we know what's going on already, we don't have to think twice about providing the funding that is needed so that we can get more teachers, we can get more um, resources for mental health, we can have more centers, we can have more assistance to help kids with special needs. We can bring those people that have the, the, the ability to help our kids and bring it to a place where we can do restorative practices, where we don't need the SROs, where the SROs are, not a, are targeting our kids, where we can put programs in place that all of our kids are able to thrive in, where our kids can see themselves when they look at not only the teachers, but also those representing in the council. And when they go and speak in the council, they know their voice is actually being not only heard, but received. Received and, and taken in with a plan, a plan of action. I see you, I hear you, and we're going to address that issue for you. Not being dismissed. Something as simple as in, in, in San Domingo, asking for, can we get lights on the basketball court so that the kids can play after the, when it gets dark? Something is, it seems trivial, but we're talking about access to things for kids to do, right? Seven months, seven months asking, can we just get some lights? <laughs> this is the importance of it. So there are countless stories that I have of individuals that have shared with me that they have gone to council about that are still unanswered because they're not being seen, they're not being respected, they're not being taken seriously, and so it's time to change things for the better. Thank you.
Thank you, Monica. Next up, we'll have Reverend Dr. Lewis Watson of the Watchmen with One Voice Ministerial Alliance. Thank you. Uh, that was a hard act to follow, the Sister Brooks, no. but uh, I am Lewis Watson, and I stand as the president uh, for the Watchmen with One Voice Ministerial Alliance uh, here in Salisbury. Uh, we are an ecumenical a group of pastors that represent our our community and pretty much the uh, the four counties here in this in this area. We stand today in agreement, and uh, we stand firmly with you and the other minority leaders who uh, dare to take a stand against uh, these adverse actions that put our minorities at a disadvantage. Uh, far too long, as already been stated, uh, we have been put. Uh, in the back, set in the back seat, have had to sit around and watch others uh, who are not our color uh, take the front seat and things go well for them while it does not go well uh, for our children, our school systems, and also our county seats. Uh, therefore, we are asking and uh, we are standing with others who are here today demanding that a change take place. Uh, we want our children and grandchildren not to go through what we're going through today, having to stand here to demand that which is right. Uh, we want them to know that uh, as they go to vote, that their vote means something. Uh, as an alpha, uh, belonging to Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, we have a statement, a voteless people as a hopeless people. And we want our children and grandchildren and all of our vicinity to know that your vote matters. And if you don't get out there to vote, we will always be standing here fighting. Uh, we can come together, unify our efforts and our intentions and demand uh, that we have more seats on the county and that we have more representatives on the Board of Education and that our school system be changed so that uh, we are not having to repeatedly come here every year uh, to stand as we are today. So uh, in short, I want you to know that we are here, we won't stop coming, we will keep fighting, and we will stand with our minority leaders as the watchmen with one voice, as pastors who lead this community. We are the voice for the voiceless, and we will keep lifting up our voice until we see change take place. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Reverend Lewis uh, Watson. Next up, I'd like to invite uh, Reverend James Jones of the Caucus of African American Leaders to the podium. Good afternoon. You talk about a hard act to follow. <laughs> uh, I am James Jones. I'm the convener of the Caucus of African American Leaders on Maryland's entire eastern shore. That is from Cecil County all the way down through Worcester County. And we stand for diversity inclusion, racial, social, economic justice. We stand for educational rights for our children. And we stand for people having an opportunity and a privilege to advance in their lives and their lifestyle. I won't call names, but we just recently had a grand battle that we had to go through in another county, our neighboring county, for the violation of the 1965 Voter Rights Act, and we were victorious in that. And if we have to do that again, right here in Wacomico County, we will stand, we will fight, we will stay in your presence, we will stay in your faces, you will hear our voices, because we will not revert to not the 90s, nor the 80s. We will not revert to the 70s, and we will not go back and revisit the 60s. It's time for change. And people of color are granted the same opportunities as anyone else on God's great creation. We want to see things done decently and in order, but we will not, we will not be excluded in the decision-making by political structures not to have a voice for what goes on in our communities, in our businesses, in our churches, in our schools. Because that last one, that school is vitally important to us. 
And we had to get past several obstacles to make a difference. Sometimes you have to stand even when you don't understand that there's time for change. We as an organization connected, blended in with these other organizations that you've heard from today. We'll go with the model that we use so strongly in the caucus and that is uniform unity without uniformity. You must have it. We must look forward to incorporating a stance that people of color will have adequate choices and decision-making values that will make a difference in our communities. I would leave you with this. No one can do it alone. But as we unite and stand for purpose and display proper and adequate decision making, we as a people will make a difference. God bless you all. Thank you, Reverend Jones. Is all right, so um, at this point of the press conference, uh, we'll open the floor if we have any questions from any of the reporters. Uh, uh, please feel free to ask any questions that you might have. Okay, seeing none. So that wraps up uh, our press conference today here in Wacombeco County. Uh, thank you all so much for attending. Um, and we'll be releasing a full official press release um, later today following the press conference. Thank you.